Today, I thought I'd share with you some narrow trees for small yards that can pack a punch. A lot of these trees are deciduous, which means that they lose their leaves in the winter, but I'm also going to include a couple of narrow evergreen options that will create year-round privacy in your small garden. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amy, I'm from Pretty Purple Door, and I help home gardeners create landscapes that are uniquely you. Finding the right tree is always a difficult decision. This is particularly true when you're dealing with a small yard because you need to make the best of every single square inch of gardening space that you have. And it can be difficult to find a tree that doesn't grow to like 60 or 80 feet high and just as wide, but I'm here to tell you that just because your yard is small does not mean that you don't have the space for a beautiful tree. So I hope that this video will show you that there are options that will fit into just about any landscape. First up is the Goldspire Ginkgo tree, and this grows in zones four to nine in full sun to part sun, and it gets about 15 feet high and five to six feet wide, and at maturity, it can get up to 30 feet high and 10 feet wide. I try to include the full size of the tree because usually what you'll see online is what the tree's size is going to be at 10 years. So you can expect this tree to be 14 to 15 feet high and five to six feet wide in 10 years. And then potentially over time, it can get up to 30 feet high and 10 feet wide. So that's what that means. And the growth rate on this gold spire ginkgo is moderate, which is somewhere between 12 to 16 inches per year. This gold spire ginkgo has a deep green foliage. It's unharmed by urban smog. The leaves will filter out pollutants in the air and give you tons of fresh, clean air. This narrow ginkgo provides shade and beautiful deep green backdrop for other plants to pop against. And I know that this looks bright yellow. In the fall, this is when it looks like this. The leaves of gold spire will turn this beautiful golden yellow and it just demands attention. It's a great accent for your fall garden. It's important to note that Goldspire is a new cultivar, so it's difficult to know its full-grown size. According to Dick Crum, aka Dr. Dirt, who has been writing newspaper columns about gardening for 45 years, he said to just be aware that it's newer and they're not really sure how big it can actually get over time. Next up is the Crimson Point Flowering Plum Tree. I have this in my landscape and it is absolutely gorgeous. It grows in zones four to nine in full sun. It gets about 20 to 25 feet high and five to six feet wide. And it's got a moderate growth rate. In early spring, it's covered in these stunning clusters of pinkish white flowers all along the branches before the foliage even appears for the year. And they are fragrant flowers too. They smell really pretty. This beautiful narrow tree has an attractive deep purple foliage throughout the season. So once it leafs out for the year, it stays like this all through the fall until the leaves drop. The photo that you're looking at here is from Chanticleer Garden in Wayne, PA. But like I said, I also have this tree in my home landscape and I absolutely love it. Next is Tukasa Silhouette Japanese Maple. No idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but it grows in zones five to nine in part sun. So it's got some shade tolerance and it gets about 15 to 20 feet high and six to seven feet wide with a slow growth rate like most Japanese maples. So this particular variety is the first columnar form of the popular Japanese maple tree. It can form an amazing ornamental hedge and it could also be a centerpiece where you just plant one and use it as a focal point. It's incredibly versatile. The foliage is this cheerful limey green in the spring and then it turns to this darker green that you see in the photo through the summer. And then in the fall, it changes to a brilliant red color. So lots of seasonal interest in this one and just a really cute petite size. I think it's a great one to consider. Here we have the Japanese flagpole flowering cherry. And wow, isn't this one a showstopper? It grows in zones five to eight in full sun to part sun and about 25 feet high and 12 feet wide. The growth rate on this is fast, about two feet per year. So that's kind of a plus two where it's gonna grow quickly for you. The flagpole Japanese flowering cherry is perfect for a garden with limited space. In April and May, the upright branches are covered with these large pale pink flowers like in the picture here. The bronze green foliage will turn to a mid green and then it orange and red in the autumn. So it's all different colors. It's all over the spectrum. So if you have space for it, the flagpole flowering cherry can really bring a lot of drama and interest into your garden in all four seasons. So definitely check that one out. Here we have the Forever Goldie Arborvitae, and this is an evergreen option. It grows in zones three to eight in full sun. It gets about 12 feet high and three to four feet wide and grows 
over one foot of new growth per year. And Forever Goldie is sort of the lesser known of the Arborvitaes. I know most people think of Green Giant or Emerald Green, but this Forever Goldie is a really cute option. It's got this bright green foliage that's tinged with yellow, and I like to say it turns gold with the cold. So as it gets colder, it turns more of that yellow. And the glowing needles, they just shine. And it's like a beacon of brightness in the cold and gloomy weather as it gets colder. It's also pretty well behaved. It doesn't shed. So you're going to get maximum visual interest all year round without the hassles of having to clean up after the tree. It's a soft foliage. It's not prickly at all. It would be a great focal point in a garden on your property, but you, I've also seen them planted as hedges and they look really pretty as well. Here we have the Armstrong Gold Maple. This grows in zones four to nine in full sun. It gets about 40 feet high and 12 feet wide. And the growth rate is very fast on this tree. It's named for its gold orange foliage that you see in the picture, which makes it a standout, especially in the fall. It's got more going for it than just the fall interest though. It's great for small spaces. And in the spring, the tree spouts these small red flowers and these winged seeds that are characteristic of maples that are a bright red. And during the spring and summer, it has light green leaves. It has this really cool grayish colored bark and red branches. The natural canopy of the tree is at about six feet, but you could also prune and limb this tree up to make more head space or height clearance above the tree. So even if you have a small yard, you can kind of limb it up so you can walk underneath it. The, I think that's a really cool feature of this tree. Here we have a weeping white spruce. Again, this is an evergreen, obviously, but it's, oh my gosh, I just love these weeping trees. This is really cold tolerant. It grows in zones two to eight in full sun. It gets about 20 to 30 feet high and six to 10 feet wide. And it grows fast actually. So the weeping white spruce, it features this deep bluish green foliage that turns a uh, lighter green in the spring. It's got this really delicate, graceful weeping pattern. It makes it really ideal for small gardens that need a really strong vertical element. This tree also works great as a windbreak a unique privacy screen, or like I said, as a standalone plant in your garden. And it'll reach 10 feet in the first 10 years, so that 20 to 30 feet high is expected over its lifetime, so it'll fit in a lot of places where the space is tight. This here is a columnar apple tree called Blushing Delight, and it grows in zones four to nine in full sun, 11 feet high and only two to three feet wide. It grows moderately fast, and how cool is this? You can have an upright columnar growth habit and actually get apples out of it. It's a real space saver. It produces its fruit on spurs along the main stem of the tree. It merges disease resistance with this narrow upright habit, and it makes it a perfect tree for placing anywhere, whether it's in a container, on a patio, or in your landscape, and you can still get fruit from it. Pretty cool. Here we have the Sky Pencil Holly. This is another evergreen option. It grows in zones five to nine in full apart sun, and it gets about eight to 10 feet high and two feet wide. The growth rate here is about 10 to 12 inches per year, which is considered low to moderate rate. This is super popular and with good reason. If you need a narrow tree in a really tight space, Sky Pencil Holly is definitely going to be on the recommended list. It grows skyward naturally. I like to say that because you don't need to actually trim this or prune it in any way. This is just the natural growth habit of it. And it's like a little exclamation point for your garden. I see them often as blanking a entryway or a walkway or something like that. And it can look very formal when you use them that way, but they are pretty. Here we have the Slender Silhouette Columnar Sweet Gum Tree, and this grows in zones five to nine in full sun. It can get 60 feet high and five to six feet wide, so super tall and narrow, and it grows really fast. It will turn heads no matter what season it is. It's got this emerald green foliage, and then it turns this orange red hue in the fall. And it's perfect for tight spaces because of how thin and tall it is. Some say that American sweet gums are a nuisance because they drop this spiky seed filled ball fruit thing. And, but you don't have to worry about this one because it produces only a little fruit and it falls in such a small area since the tree is so narrow that you're not going to have a lot of mess from this tree, even though it still does produce the fruit. Here we have the Franz Fontaine Hornbeam. This grows in zones four to eight in full sun to shade. So a lot of sun to shade tolerance with this tree. 
it can get 25 feet high to six feet wide, and then eventually it can grow to 50 high by 20 wide. It's a moderate grower, so about 12 inches or so per year. And this was recommended to me by one of my readers on my blog, Jake Perillo. He told me that this is his favorite evergreen for his landscape. It's also commonly known as the European hornbeam or the common hornbeam. And it's a long-lived, tough tree that can tolerate a lot of conditions. So I think that's why it's such a great option for so many people. In 10 years, it seldom spreads more than 68 feet wide while getting to 20 to 25 feet high. So again, that difference between what you'll see online and what it actually grows to. But overall, it's like a very handsome tree. I like to call it a handsome tree. It's got this rich green summer foliage and in the fall, that greenish foliage turns to more of a golden yellow color. So it's got some fall interest as well. So I think this is a great tree to consider in your small landscape. Here we have the pencil point juniper. This grows in zones three to eight in full sun, part sun, or shade. It's very versatile. It only gets six feet high and one feet wide, and it's got a slow growth rate of only one to six inches per year. This is probably the slowest growing tree on the list, but typically if it's a dwarf variety, it will be a little bit slow growing. Beautiful blue-green foliage. It shimmers in a sunny garden and it's just such a, a nice size. So if you have limited space, it's definitely a great option. It makes a good screen or a small hedge and it prefers well-drained soil. It's drought tolerant, it's cold hardy, it's a tough little tree and it can survive a lot of tough conditions. So if you have bad soil or things like that, this is something that should survive and even thrive even if you don't have great conditions. Before we wrap this up, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a warning about fast growing trees. They shouldn't really be the only criteria that you're basing your decision on when you're purchasing a tree. I know that it can be difficult, especially if you're looking for privacy or you want things to fill in fast, but gardening will teach you the art of patience, my friend. And sometimes fast growing trees are actually a lot weaker and they're more prone to disease. And pretty much always, if the tree is really fast growing, it's going to have a lot shorter of a lifespan than one that grows at a slow to a moderate rate. Another thing about faster growing trees is that some of them can have a really shallow or a weak root system because they're putting on so much growth overground that the underground they're not putting in that strong root system. So that can make them a bit prone to falling over and high winds or storms. If you live in an area where you have a lot of high winds, you might want to consider something that's a bit slower growing. There are a lot of other things you can do in the interim while your tree is still growing in to provide privacy. So I'm going to provide a link to some of those privacy ideas in the description below for you. And if you liked this video, you're also going to like the video I made about narrow evergreen trees. Evergreens are my absolute favorite type of tree or shrub, and they have so much to offer. I feel like they're so underutilized, and they really do create the structure and the backbone of a garden's design. So I'm going to leave a link to that video right here for you, and I'll see you over there.